Hi folks, how are you doing? Um, in the previous episodes, we discussed in details that linguistics is divided into a theoretical linguistics and applied linguistics. And any other field of linguistics is either under the umbrella of applied linguistics or theoretical linguistics. We also discussed the different fields of uh, applied linguistics, such as language testing, language teaching, language laboratories, psycholinguistics, and all the different fields of applied linguistics. Today we're going to be talking about theoretical linguistics and specifically morphology. In, in the previous episode we talked about phonetics and phonology and we know that the different subcategories of a theoretical linguistics are phonetics and phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and pragmatics. Today we're going to be studying in details morphology. It is really an interesting um, you know, field of theoretical linguistics to study about. Well, what is morphology? Morphology, as a, as a definition, it is the study of the internal structure of a word. So, uh, to make this clear, if we consider this example, the word talks. So, as divided, if we want to study this word, the internal structure of this word, we have the original word, which is talk, plus the S. So now we analyze the word and uh, broke it into two parts, the first one and the second one. So we have the word talks. Now, so we write first the definition of morphology. It is the study of the internal structure of a word. And, and let us just go back to phonology. In phonology, we discuss something called phoneme. Okay? In morphology, we have something called morphemes. Morphemes. Or we can say abbreviated into morphs. So what are morphemes? Let us also go back to the same example we had before. The word talks. We said that if we analyze this word, we can break it into two parts. Talk, the first one, plus the S. So each part is called morpheme. This, number one, this is morpheme and the S indicating the third singular is another morpheme. Okay, is that clear? So let us have another example. The word making. It has two morphemes. The first one, make, and the second one, ing. Now, we define the word morphemes. The word morphemes, or a morpheme, and as the smallest meaning called units. So a very small unit of the language that has a meaning types of morphemes. Now we move to types of morphs. We're going to write the word morphs instead of the long word morphemes. We have two types of morphemes. Number one, free, and number two, bound. A free morpheme and a bound morpheme. Let's have the same example again. The word talk plus the S. Talk and S indicating the third singular. 
So the word talks has two morphemes. Number one, the word talk is a free morpheme and the S is a bound morpheme. Why so? A free morpheme is a word that can stand alone by itself and make meaning. So the, the word talk has a meaning. Okay, somebody talks, speaks. Okay, so it has meaning. And if you saw it alone, as one said, you understand it. So that indicates the word speak. The S by itself has no meaning. So this is a bound morpheme. So a free morpheme is a morpheme that can stand alone by itself and has a meaning. A bound morpheme is a morpheme that can't stand alone. So this is very clear. Now we move to, to the types of free morphemes. Types of free morphs. We have two types of free morphemes. Number one, lexical morphs. Number two, functional morphs. Very easy. What are the lexical morphs? They are nouns, verbs, and adjectives. So what about the functional morphemes? They are the morphemes that have a function like articles, pronouns, prepositions, and conjunctions. Very easy. For example, the article the. This is what? This is a functional morpheme. So if we have the phrase the car and you are asked to analyze this phrase. The is a functional morpheme and car is a lexical morpheme because car is now okay car is now so it's a lexical morpheme the is an article so it has a function now uh, so it is a functional morpheme now we move to the types of bound morpheme types of bound morphs Type morphemes, or sorry, bound morphemes, uh, bound morphemes have also two types. The first one, derivational, derivational morphs. Number two, inflectional morphs or we can call them inflections. In short, what is the difference between the derivational morphemes and inflectional morphemes? Derivational morphemes are used to derive okay, some other forms, some other uh, uh, grammatical forms from the stem. Considering this example, the word talk, Okay. The word talk. We said talk talks plus the S. Talk alone by itself as a free morpheme is called stem. It's called stem. So derivational morpheme also used to derive some other um, grammatical um, grammatical types from the stem. Okay? The word talk has an example, talk, active. So it changes the stem, it, take, it changes the type of the stem. So the word talk along by itself, it means it is a verb, okay? It is a verb. Now we add the A-T-I-V-E and it becomes what? And it becomes what? An adjective, okay? So clear. So it changes the type of the stem. So it's a derivational morpheme. Now inflectional morphemes, do not change the type of the stem. 
like, very easy, the, the word talk. If we add S indicating the third singular talks, now that becomes also verb indicating the third singular, style of verb. Okay, in the past, talked. The ED, the ED, the ED does not change the type of the stem. It is still a verb. So we do not have another type of uh, the stem. Okay? Very easy. And thanks a lot for listening. Bye bye.